Greetings, this is Eddie Muller, the founder and president of the Film Noir Foundation, which is uh, based in the United States and is dedicated to uh, rescuing and restoring missing and lost examples of film noir, not just from the United States, but from all over the world, which leads me to the movies that you're about to see at this fabulous noir film festival in the Czech Republic. Uh, I am honored that, I don't know if you can see this, but well, you can with that ring light on it. Um, this was the award that I was presented in 2016 uh, at this very film festival for my contributions to, uh, to film noir, uh, which I greatly appreciate. It, that was a highlight. And so I thank uh, Milan and Jana and all the folks who put on this festival for that tremendous honor and that they invited me to do this introduction. I wish I was doing it in person and I hope that one day I'll get back to the festival to present some things live. Uh, but for right now, it is a really, uh, it's a great privilege to be able to introduce uh, a track of Argentine noir films that I had a, uh, a big role in restoring so that uh, they were returned to their rightful place in cinema history. Uh, the Argentine film industry it's very interesting. It was a thriving enterprise in the 1930s, and the very famous cinematographer, John Alton, a Hungarian, uh, had gone to Argentina and played a large role in establishing a film industry there, actually helping construct one of the major film studios, Lumaton, in Argentina. But by the, the advent of the Perón era, the Juan Perón era, when he essentially became a fascist dictator, of Argentina, the film industry was something very, very different. Uh, and what was left of it, uh, some very, very interesting work came out of that. So these three films um, that are being shown at this festival are, are all magnificent examples of film noir that came out of this very uh, repressive era in Argentina. Two of them are by a wonderful filmmaker named Roman Vignoli Barreto. And um, he was actually from Uruguay and uh, was invited in to uh, Buenos Aires to direct films. He, he was primarily a theater director. And as a young man, they, they, they found uh, a lack of talent in the business in the early 50s. And so uh, Vignoli Barreto was invited in to make movies. And the, these two films that he directed, one is a fabulous uh, streamlined adaptation of a novel called The Beast Must Die, uh, La Bestia Debe Morir in Spanish, that was by a writer named Nicholas Blake. It's a landmark noir novel. And Nicholas Blake was the pseudonym for Cecil Day Lewis, who was a poet and a mystery writer in Ireland, who would eventually become the poet laureate of Ireland. And also, interestingly, the uh, father of the great actor Daniel Day-Lewis. Uh, and these two movies uh, are just exemplary examples of film noir to me. Uh, El Vampiro Negro is a fabulous reimagining of Fritz Lang's landmark 1931 film M. Uh, I like to consider it somewhat of a a feminist reimagining of that story because the one thing that is completely missing in M is uh, is women. And uh, El Vampiro Negro has fabulous roles for women. The protagonist is reimagined as a woman who has to protect her daughter uh, from the child killer that's on the loose. Very interesting to note that they go out of their way. Vignoli Barreto goes out of his way to not specifically make this a film set in Buenos Aires. You'll see on the signage, uh, there's French, there's German. Uh, he's he sort of is bringing in all of these global influences to create this sort of fantasia of this uh, scary nocturnal environment. Uh, but it's an absolutely fabulous 
film. And uh, Olga Zubri, who plays uh, the lead character in the film, uh, was an immensely popular star in Argentina, uh, considered sort of the Argentine Marilyn Monroe. And, and she's just terrific in this film. And the cinematography in both movies is absolutely extraordinary. Um, now, Los Tayos Amargos, which I think is one of the best noir films ever made, quite honestly, uh, is by a director named uh, Fernando Ayala. And it's much more um, directly a commentary on what it means to be an Argentinian in this era. And Fernando Pena, who is uh, largely responsible for my knowing anything about these films, um, has explained to me that this really is a film about Argentine identity and how the country had sort of lost its stature as a major world power uh, by the 1950s and, and how this preyed on the minds of many people. And you will see this exemplified uh, in the movie. Um, and, and I do have to say that it's actually Fernando who should be here introducing these films to you because uh, I met him in 2008 on a vacation uh, to Buenos Aires that my wife and I were planning to take. And by the time we got there, news had broken that uh, this major find in world cinema had transpired, which was the recovery of the only complete version of Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Uh, and this is something that was treated in the media as a, as a happy accident, uh, when in fact, Fernando, who is Argentina's greatest cinephile, had tracked this print of the film for over 20 years. And it took that long for him to finally get his hands on it, to, to get through the bureaucracy that existed in Argentina so that he could get his hands on the film and confirm that it was in fact a complete version of Metropolis. So uh, I met uh, Fernando on that trip to Buenos Aires and in short order, he introduced me to many other examples of Argentine noir, uh, these three being among the best. There are others. Uh, no abras nunca esa puerta, uh, which translates in English as never open that door, or uh, apenas un delincuente, uh, which is uh, hardly a criminal, which is a great film by Hugo Fregonese. That, uh, that we've also preserved those films. Uh, but these three films in this track are absolutely extraordinary examples of film noir made in Argentina and virtually lost to the world at large. Um, I do a lot of work with uh, people in France and, and home to the greatest cinephiles in the world and it was an extraordinary thing to ask people like Bertrand Tavernier or Pierre Rissian, like, what do you think of these movies and realize they had never seen them. So this really is a special occasion. And I commend uh, the Noir Film Festival in the Czech Republic for screening these films uh, because they just are unknown and have not been seen uh, outside of Argentina for many, many years. And it was uh, my privilege and honor to be able to raise money to restore these films and get them back in circulation. So um, I, I sincerely hope that you enjoy these, but that's not really a hope because these are extraordinary movies uh, that deserve to be recognized as among the best examples of film noir ever made in the 20th century. Thanks.